All right. The Long Island Killer is back. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Wade once again here on Short Dog. Chris, it's been a while. How are you, my friend? Yeah, it's been too long. I'm doing good. Um, I'm deep in camp, you know, can't wait to compete again. But uh, it's very good to see you. Good to speak to you again. And is it is good to see you again. You are preparing for your upcoming fight on April 1st. You're going to face and uh, all the acquaintance, uh, Baba Jenkins, uh, in what is going to be your fifth uh, PFL season. Uh, man, you are the veteran of this game uh, nowadays. How do you feel about that? No, it's crazy, right? Uh, five seasons is... Um, I'm just... I'm so happy. I'm so excited. I, the moment I signed with the PFL, leaving the UFC, I heard what their, what their style was, the format, what they were trying to do and build. I was all in, like, from the jump on wanting to be one of the like pioneers, like first season, second season, and to, to work your way through. And who knows, you know, maybe they establish uh, everything goes amazing. And in 20 or 30 years, they're kicking ass. And I'm remembered as one of these like first guys, you know, that came through. So I always embraced the role of like being that pioneer. And I'm just so thankful that you know, I've done well enough and uh, they've seen enough um, from me that I've been able to to be in the tournament for five years running. Nobody, I think it's like me and one other guy have, have done that. Yeah, you saw all kinds of things over the years. You took part in the one night tournament. You saw the evolution of the PFL roster. And this is also going to be your third season at featherweight. Um are you still feeling comfortable? I mean, I recall that we spoke the first time, your first year as a featherweight in PFL. Um, has anything changed since uh, moving down to 145? Um, it's definitely a little bit of a lifestyle change for me where um, I have to run more, di especially distance running, and I have to like lift weights a little bit less. And that's a little hard for me because personally I like weightlifting and I don't love running as much. So, but for mental toughness, it's good because I've forced myself to do things that I don't, you know, that aren't easy to do for me naturally. Um, aside from that, uh, definitely the diet has to stay a little tighter um, for a longer period of time, which is a little annoying you know I, I also love food i love different types of food here on the island on long island we have really good food and um making that sacrifice is a commitment but it's one that i'm i'm willing to make you know i i feel good at 45 when i compete so it's it's worth the cut for me i always i always felt like i was just a tad undersized at 55 I also saw some videos of you explaining your techniques. Particularly, I saw that kicking technique you used against Kyle Bokniak, that very beautiful feint before hitting the head of your opponent. What can you tell me about that one? <laughs> yeah, so um, we've started with the gym I own. We've started to make some different types of videos just to break you know, branch out our content. And some of them are like little breakdowns on things that I've done in fights and why I use them or why I feel like I work, they work. And one of those things is I like to change the speeds of my kick, like a pitcher would change the speed of his fastball and change up. I think that intentionally slowing down a strike to throw timing off is, uh, it's like a, to me, it's like a high IQ play on trying to trick somebody. So I'm always trying to figure out how I can work the mental game into such a physical sport and make it work for me. And one of those things is changing timing on, on strikes. Your latest fight dates back to August uh, 2022. What have you been up to in the meantime? So um, I've been uh, 
very, very much focus on cleaning up and and working in in certain areas that when I went back and I watched things, I felt like, all right, you're 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 at least in this fight, you're showing that you're deficient here. Um, one of those things was just the pocket fighting, especially with Brendan, the way he he gets in and then he makes you miss and then he really comes for you on his second wave of striking. So um, trying to like take a page out of that book and to be to have better presence in the pocket when I fight to um, to block more shots so that I have the opportunity to to counter instead of getting forced out of the pocket. So I've been really, really um, focused on trying to beat somebody that's built the way that he is, the way he fights. I recall the build-up to that fight, and it appeared that between uh, you and uh, Lofnen, there was some animosity. Um, so was it for you a personal fight? Did you take, did, uh, did you take yes, something that he said personally? Um, you know, I think something that I learned from last year was... Um, It's not, it doesn't serve me particularly as a fighter uh, to allow the, the trash talk and, and whatever extra hype around the fight to go past a certain level because it's just like a, a distraction at that point. And it's a waste of my own like energy and my attention. And he admitted to me after the fight that he sought out to do a lot of that stuff intentionally to try to like throw me off my game because he was nervous fighting me. Um, he had his friends involved trying to get me fighting with them. It was just uh, some of it. I say to myself, I get it. A little gamesmanship, you know, some of it was just dirtbag trash stuff, you know, pounding on my door in the night the night before I fight and like yelling and screaming like um making threats just like cer certain stuff I have no respect for that went on and like people that are around him but I've learned that like for me it's I can't any longer focus my energy and attention on on that i need to focus more on just fighting relax on the other stuff i'm not making any more money because me and him went at each other verbally you know mm -hmm. so it doesn't pay i understand um what about with uh, baba that time when you already faced baba in 2021 you defeated him uh, via decision it was a pretty dominant performance but again i recall uh, that you were a little bit bothered by the fact that he was the favorite in that fight at the uh, bookings and uh, you were the the underdog i don't think i checked before our interview the odds are not out yet but i don't think that uh, this will be again the case this time considering that you defeated him that time yeah i was just i think that was just a talking point i was a little more bothered that last time about his yeah i think somebody got me to say in an interview that like uh i wasn't like scared of his wrestling or that i was a better striker than him or something And he took it really personal. And that's when we started going back and forth when we would see each other. And that's another situation where this year, like, listen, at the end of the day, me and him, we're still going to fight. You know, we're going to they're going to lock the cage. So it doesn't pay to get all wound up beforehand, whether he likes me or he doesn't like me or I like him or I don't like him personally. It changes uh, nothing. And that's something that I feel like I, I added to my, men my mental this year is, you know, I don't need to have a fight with him for three weeks beforehand um, in order to, to perform my best. What I need to do is focus on what his abilities are in there so that then when they lock the cage, I'm 
my best self instead of worrying about nonsense like what you know he says he could take you down or you know whatever the case may be so i'll just leave it at the fact that i have a lot of respect for what he's accomplished and especially in his wrestling career i think he's a very athletic tough fighter but um i'm just you know they put him in my way right away again this year it's no different than what they did with lance last year I like Lance. I have a ton of respect for Lance, but you know, they matched us up first and you're not going to derail what I'm trying, trying to come out here and accomplish. So he's just, uh, he's got to go. Do you expect anything different from the last fight you two fought? I, I've tried to play that out a little bit in my head. Like what could he switch up? Because. He did a lot of grappling and it didn't go his way. I could see a scenario where he tries to keep it on his feet a little bit more and have like a back and forth kind of point fighting situation go on. That way it's like, can you create some, can maybe steal takedowns late in the round and like win, his, his, um, win the fight that way. So that's where my head is at thinking that maybe he, he looks for a little more striking and then looks for that like two minute mark or, or one minute mark and tries to shoot and score a takedown so that the judges are like, oh, okay, he won the round. So I'm gonna have my eye out for him trying to be a little tricky with a game plan. But that's the only way I could really see it change up. Because last time he just came at me, he came at me flying to start the fight. Then he, he was swinging on me, then he took me down right away. And then we started scrambling And it spent a lot of energy for him. So I could see some, him trying to like bide more of his energy, pick his spots on his feet, and then like steal a takedown late. I think that's like probably if I had to guess what's in his head to try to beat me, it's probably that. Because if he tries to take me down too early, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna scramble and I'm gonna wind up on top of him. So he's got to try to do it where he feels like he can hold it for a little bit. But I don't think that you foresee a different outcome of that fight, right? No, not at all. If anything else, I think I've tightened up a lot of stuff. Listen, I had him in a lot of submission attempts in that fight. I probably slapped like four or five different chokes on him and he was able to battle out of them. But if you were, if you were me, he was making crazy noises when I had those chokes in on him wheezing and like you could tell he was right on the cusp of like I, he couldn't breathe and he had to roll or move so i've been cleaning up all that stuff to where hopefully there is no space and he can't roll and once i get his neck that's it um just trying to sharpen up those those subs and those skills well chris Best of luck with the Rakomi fight and hopefully I will hear again from you in the future. Thank you for giving us again a little bit of your time today. Tutor, thank you. As always, it's a pleasure. And I'll talk to you throughout the season. The pleasure is all mine. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. All right, you too, bud. Bye.